We have not prepared for this one. And I have the hiccups. And I wasn't prepared for that either. Are you ready? We're gonna be thinking on the fly. This is you and me right what now. This video is. Reasons why board games are good for you. Oh yeah, okay. Cha cha chi chi cha cha bo chi chi roll call. My name is Why Jamie. do you, you never get that right? Yes, I do. It's cha cha chibuchi. No, it's not. Cha cha. What did I say? I don't know. It wasn't I say, cha cha chibuchi. Cha cha chi chi cha cha bo chi chi roll call. It's cha cha chibuchi. Cha cha bo chi chi. <laughs> doesn't sound right to me. That's Dad. not even what I said. Oh. And welcome back to Foster the Meeple, a channel all about board games and board gamey things. Exactly. We are here with a little bit of a discussion yep. type of video this is a today. Video. It's not. I don't know. I was just thinking about you know the reasons why the board game hobby is great and the reasons why board games are great and why board games are good for you. So if you're like, why do why do people play board games? Well, it's because they're good for you. Obviously. So these are some of the reasons why board games are good for you. We have nothing written down. We haven't prepared. Nothing scripted. Do you know where it's going to come from, though? To be fair, we right don't script there. anything, which you could probably tell. Let's just start talking, and we'll just see where it goes. Now, the one thing that I'd like to start off with is, obviously, board games are good for you because they help you to connect with other people. The obvious one? That's an obvious one. And so let's talk about it a little bit. Right? So board games help you to connect with other people in a lot of ways. For us, it has been through building a community, mm -hmm. finding people who share the same interests as, as us. And what I found just through the Discord community alone, which obviously we started because of board games, and we've connected with all of these people because we all share a love of board games, but it's gone so far beyond that because I found like our people who like like all of the same things. Like people are, mm. you know, they're all readers and they all love to watch movies and, you know, people love Disney and we have like our little Disney I community. think there's a lot of adjacency things to board games that people in this hobby enjoy. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah, like RPG games and, you know, even like Jeff plays Crib with somebody on BGA all the time now. So there's another like piece to it. Yeah, I mean, ultimately I think... When it comes to the community piece, there's a bunch of different little like variables and, and things that I think is, is important. And one is, I do think there's a tendency for a lot of board gamers to be introvert. Yeah. It's easier to be somewhat extroverted via Discord or like board game arena to get to know people a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and then maybe that leads to a convention or maybe that leads to you going to a local gaming store to play games with people. Because, like, it opens the door to understanding that there are people like us yeah. that just like to play games with people but might not be as outgoing as others. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. finding those little safe pockets of people that you now understand, think, and act and like the same things as you do yeah. makes it easier to then open yourself up to others. Yes. I would also say that kind of brings up another point of like, I had this conversation with someone at work because we all did these personality test things and one of them came up as an extrovert. And she's like, I can't believe that I'm such an introverted person. And I was like, yeah, I'm a really introverted person too, unless I'm with my people. I was like, so are you still an introvert when you're with your people? And it just made me think about mm. like a convention. Yeah. So like I am definitely way more outgoing than yeah. I would be like if I have to go to a networking event for work. Like mm. I am more likely, like you're more likely to stop by somebody's table and be like, hey, what are you guys playing? Or like, hey, can I join you? Or like meeting new people. So I feel like it helps us come out of our shells a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think it's a little bit of comfortability. I mean, I I think I'm really good. You're, I would think you would agree here. Um, you can lean on me in other social situations. I've never... I don't, issue. I don't really struggle in any social environment. I'm way, but what I would say is I'm way more nervous in a non board game, book, video game, whatever kind of environment. A like I can, environment. I can, I can mask it and do what I need to do, but I would agree insofar that 
it's so much easier to be at a convention around the people that you know also like the things you like mm -hmm. because it also just makes it inherently easier to talk to people you don't know. Because yeah. one of the biggest struggles with talking to someone you don't know is finding a commonality. Mm -hmm. And when you're at a convention or you're at a local gaming store or whatever or in Discord, we're all there for the same reason. So it's an easy injection of a talk path mm -hmm. that sense of building community and finding your people i think is is definitely one of the biggest pieces for us mm -hmm. um and i'm sure a lot of people have a similar story to us where we found this late and i would say like we've kind of grown as individuals o over our lifespan like mm -hmm. if you were all to know i think jamie and i back in university you'd be like what who are, are these <laughs> say people what it's just nice to finally feel like you can just be yourself 100%. and not be judged and not, you know, whatever. So another great thing that I think is the flexibility of board games. This is why they're great for you because they can be flexible within your life and how you play. Like you can schedule, there's games that play in like 15 minutes. There's games that play in three hours. There's games that you could play solo, two players, three players, 10 players. Mm -hmm. You could play online, like virtually with people from all over the world, or mm -hmm. you can play just sitting at your dining room table. So I think board games are great for you because they offer you a hobby that fits into your life the way that you need them to. Mm -hmm. We see that all the time because we have friends, you know, once again, specifically through the Discord or that we've met through YouTube who have like, you know, a bunch of kids. And we all know that like, it's talking hard to, yeah, I'm talking with Max. It's hard to schedule board games when you have a lot of kids. But guess what? You find time because you can sit down and play just like take your BGA turns on your lunch break or do these types of things or like there are people who go into the community and they find big groups to play with. I just mm -hmm. think it's really cool that there's just, I feel like there's something for everyone. There's a theme for everyone. There's a mechanic for everyone. There's a game length for everyone, a player count for everyone. Accessibility for board games is easy at this point. If you think about online games, BGA is free. Mm -hmm. So anybody can play them. There's more board game cafes popping up. And I don't know about everyone, but I know like the boardroom game cafe, you pay $6 and you can play games for three hours. You can play as many games as you want. Like that's wild. Like what can you do for six hours or for $6 anymore? Yeah, I think there is, it's an interesting dichotomy between like these conversations that happen within the hobby about it, like it being... Uh, luxury or uh, you know that collector element like I mean look at us look we at have us. A, we have a ton of games Who we, would, have thought? we would fall into that Not into me. that we don't need to have all of these camp yes however like I think that gets missed because like or I think that gets like overplayed like you don't have to do this hobby in that way oh my god like no. at all you could have you could own zero games mm -hmm. and still play board games yeah on BGA for free at a local event yep um with your friends there's board there's games. there's board games at thrift shops all the time that are like two dollars and like i understand like maybe people don't have even two dollars to spend but i'm just saying like there's ways to access this hobby that requires like no minimal money. financial investment yep like minimal 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 and i don't think a lot of hobbies can say that maybe yeah. like reading Yep, reading. would be another one that you could you could kind of argue for that as well. But like, I just think that board games in general can be experienced on very limited uh, budget. Yeah, um, you can enjoy them however you want to enjoy them. Yeah, and whether that's by collecting them, like we do, or playing one a month. And no one's or... and what's <laughs> also important is like, no, wh however you experience and enjoy this hobby. That's perfect. That's great. Like nobody has a right to say that the way they do it is the way you should do it. Yeah. Like, again. And if they do, just ignore them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like people would be like, you shouldn't have so many games. Like, well, why do you care? Yeah. Like, or you're not a hobbyist if you only play Monopoly and Uno and whatever. It's like, no, you are. You're a yeah. board gamer. Sure, people don't enjoy those games, but that doesn't mean the person that does enjoy it isn't a hobbyist. Mm -hmm. Like there's so many access points to... To, to board gaming and the only people that are putting up the walls are the hobbyists themselves yeah 
Let's not and do that. Let's just not do that. Let's just not do that. You know, like I just, I really enjoyed board gaming's for, as Jamie mentioned, the accessibility to get into the hobby mm -hmm. um, is so, so minimal. Yeah. Hundred percent. Even just a deck of cards. There's so many games you can play with just a fifty-two deck of cards. So true. Yeah, definitely. Another thing, another reason why I think board games are good for you is they on I honestly truly believe this. Like, I think that they help you with your mental capacity. Like that was gonna I, be my next thing. You know, I think about the this is a sad thing to think about, but like the rising rates of things like dementia and mm. you know people who are kind of like losing touch with like that daily like thinking and i feel like board games are something that help us to practice strategy to practice critical thinking to be quick to like i don't know it just it takes mental capacity to play board games and i know me personally i have like as i've continued to play board games i am now more strategic than I ever was. And I feel like I can think about this both in board games and in life and with the channel and like those types of things. And I think board games help with that. It's interesting because they put out like there is programs or uh, games like that you luminosity. can get. Yeah, exactly. That are built to help with your mental processes and your mental fortitude yep. as you get older. And yep. Board games are doing exactly that. Like, there's a whole industry built around that. Sort of like, you know, keeping uh, elderly people active with their brain activities and mm -hmm. what have you. And board games do that already. Like, yeah. it's already a thing that's happening. And, like, I'm glad you brought that up because that was going to be the next thing I mentioned. Because whether or not this is a weird thought process to have or not, <laughs> probably is. But every time I'm playing games, I'm always like, I'm so glad I'm doing this because, like, I am getting... Uh, Staying sharp. Yeah, exactly. And like, I do think it will pay dividends when we are older, mm -hmm. because we're continuing to push our brains into bigger and bigger things in terms of strategy and synergy and optimization and all of these things like that all helps. Yeah, it helps you to look at things from like, because especially if you play like a lot of abstract games, you look at things from a different angle, it gives you different perspectives. And I don't even feel like this is just for those of us that are aging. But for young kids too, like this, what a great hobby to get a kid into to help them learn different skills. Like there's yeah. so much to learn within board games. And I love watching the people like JP of Little Big Thumbs and those types of channels who are bringing their kids into it. Like, yes, 100%, you should definitely be doing that. And I think it's also important if, you know, to jump on the kid thing, like we don't have kids and I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I understand the... Don't understand children. The... <laughs> aspects of child development and all those things so take this yeah. for what it is but what i do think is important especially in a more digital age is that we are promoting that sort of social interaction of board games with kids mm -hmm. so that they can be around a table and understand what it's like to interact with each other and what the rule sets are for that and how to be polite and how to share and uh, and talk and interact yeah. because everything's now everything's now done via phone or uh, computer and I think board games can bring kids in an environment that's safe can be uh, analyzed and protected by parents mm -hmm. to observe and and teach and and all of these things so I agree like every time I see or get a comment of like oh, I'm playing board games with my kids and they love your channel or like, thank you so much for like this game that they really love. Like, that's the stuff that I'm like, okay, amazing. Like, mm -hmm. because I know that's going to help kids like so much more than, you know, hopping on a video game and, and, and doing that thing. And I'm not, I'm a big video game player. I'm not Trying to, on video games. <laughs> trying to pretend that video games are this like evil thing because they're not. But I do think it's good to pull kids away from that. Yeah. For even just a little bit of time each week to interact with others around the table. Yeah. Even if it's parents. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's important just to get that so so social dynamic. Yeah, and that was something like I played a lot of board games when I was a kid and you played like crib and stuff like that. We would just we pull out board games and not even know the rules. Oh yeah. Like I, I remember pulling out Axis and Allies all the time. And my buddy and I would just sit and set them up and just play our own game. We were just playing with each other. Yeah. You know? We might have probably touched on this before, but or like earlier. Mm. But maybe not directly. But like I do think it 
brings people closer together. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely it's brought definitely Jamie and, brought us and I mean it more so in just spending quality time together. Yep. You know, like not anything above that, but like, you know, it's one thing to sit and watch like a TV show together or a movie together, but you're not really interacting with each other. Mm -hmm. You're interacting with each other through like, oh, look at that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's not... You're not engaged with the other person, and I feel like board games really have allowed us to, to f interact like directly and spend dedicated time together playing a game where we're invested in the thing we're doing together. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not distracted. I mean, I need to work on this, but Jamie's not distracted by her phone. <laughs> I am. Just having that thing at the table that we're like, especially cooperative games, yeah. where you have like a goal that you're both trying to achieve together, it really helps improve like communication and. Mm -hmm and nuance and like how each other thinks and like even just teaching games like mm -hmm. we've been able to establish how each of us learn differently yep. and and not only that but understand and respect what that means yeah like where i will get frustrated over certain things jamie now understands why i'm getting frustrated and can maybe be like all right let's just pull back for a second same with jamie like we just learn differently and it's just been a really good way of, of strengthening that connection. Yeah. Yeah. And that not just even for us, but just for like the friends that we've made through this hobby. I just think it really does. Like I think about all of the friendships that we have created and how close we are with yeah. some of those people. Table Knots and Pavre and the Brothers Murph and the list can literally go on and on and on and on and Michelle on. Michelle Billy. Michelle and Billy, like Sam and Tim, like these are people that we talk to every single day. They're these are people family that now. they're family. These are people that we literally will go fly across the world wherever they are to hang out with them. And I think like it just really builds these strong bonds. And I think that you can just it's almost like a like a launching point. Mm -hmm. Like oh wow, like we have this thing in common. What else do we have in common? And I just feel like it really helps to connect because if nothing else, if we're having a bad day, if we're having whatever, we can reach out to them. And, you know, we already know that we've kind of found our people, which I think we've already mentioned before. The next thing that I want to say about why board games are great for you, one of like my personal core values is surrounding laughter and having fun. And I think that there is something really magical about like no not not all board games are going to bring you laughter but setting up a game like rhino hero super battle or setting up a game like tapple or something like you can build such fantastic hilarious memories around mm. a board game and i think that sometimes we don't put as much emphasis as we should on those silly little games because yeah. sometimes we're like, oh, you're not really a board gamer if you're playing these silly little games. But like... Go back to my earlier point. Exactly. We played Rhino Hero Super Battle the other night. I'm still thinking about it. It made, We were out of our chairs. We were laughing. We were having just the best time. And I think laughter is something that is extremely good for you. It is extremely beneficial to just let yourself be silly and have fun and play games like that and I think there's so many games that give you that camel up is a great example so I think that's something that board games do for you yeah. that you know I mean you could get it from other you can watch a comedy show or you can do whatever but like I don't know there's just something special about like those moments when the tower falls or when we're playing tackle and saying that one of our hobbies is kangaroo watching like do you know what I mean like, there's just something so yeah it lets you be silly it's I do think silliness and fun is something that's underrated and underappreciated in this hobby because again yeah. like you including us I'm not absolving us of this error oh, um, either but like you'll watch top 50 lists or top 10 lists or whatever and most of those are not going to be party games. Yeah. But we can attest to the fact that when we have a gaming group over here and we play those party games, those are the ones that people leave being like, I want to play that I again. I want to play that again. I want to go buy that. So there's only like a couple people that I know that focus in like and have like open mindedness about party games. And it's like or game barrage. Or game barrage. They yeah, always, awesome about they, it. they always in their top lists have so many party games, and I think they're doing it right. Yes. Because yes, I love Root, and I love these heavy strategy games. But every time I play a game like Rhino Hero Super Battle or Flick of Faith 
or fake artist goes or to fake New York, artist or, or like doodle dash doodle dash or so clover those are the ones that i'm like that game was just so fun to play with people they just make you feel good they're feel good games and yeah. i don't think they get appreciated enough and it's another thing that's really good about this hobby you can have people that don't like board games that will tell you i don't like board games you bring them out they'll play them so clover or something <laughs> and i i guarantee you they will enjoy it because it's less about the game it's more about the people we've if, yeah, if we've done anything <laughs> right if there's anything if this channel ended tomorrow that i know we've done right is we've constantly constantly stuck to the fact that we firmly believe that it's less about the game at the table it's more about the people yeah. it's more about the people around the table enjoying themselves and having a good time any bad game can be made good with good people mm -hmm. and any great game can be made terrible with bad people yeah and it's so important that we focus on that and those like party s games just emphasize that point and they're the best things to have on they the help table get people loosen up and get there's out of their so, shell and there's so much silly crap in the world right now that it's those little pockets of joy that mm. we really need to focus on in order to just get through it all having that hour of rhino hero super battle where everyone's laughing and the time is just gone in an instant yeah those are the moments that matter the most yeah and just what i want to say to kind of end off that piece is if you have somebody that's telling you that those games are dumb or it's not a real board game because so there's no strategy or because they have luck. Just ignore them. Yeah. Those are grumpy Gusses, and we don't need the negative Nancys and the grumpy Gusses bringing us down. Okay? Yeah. We get it all the time. We put out top 10 lists. And we put out recommendations. We have people, I can't believe you like this game. Why mm -hmm. wasn't this game? Yeah. This game is better. Guess what? We don't care. We yeah. like what we like. And it's. I think that's the point. It's okay to like what you like and to have fun and to be silly and if you don't like those silly games guess what that's awesome you don't need yeah. to like them that's yeah. that's all good too yeah you know jamie's right we we do focus on this channel on fun we don't deep dive these games as much as some others might because we look at these things as sources of entertainment yeah. and we look at it the same way we look at like movies and all of these other things like i'm not critical to the degree that other people are because i'm so focused on did i have fun did i have fun playing this game and if <laughs> yeah. i did that means the game was good yeah and that also has a variable around the table 100 percent. you know i like to win i like the strategy but like if people are going to be dinguses around the table i'm not going to have fun regardless of the game that you put in front of me you can put root in front of me if i'm playing that with three other miserable people i'm going to hate it that's true. And again, like it doesn't mean we we need to stop like dismissing people because they like those types of games. Hundred percent. Again, same conversation with like Monopoly and Risk and Uno and Apples to Apples and Phase Ten. If someone it goes to a board game store or whatever and wants to sit down and play Phase Ten, great, do it. That's awesome. That's their joy. We love that. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're not a hobbyist. Like we are so gatekeepy, gatekeepy to our own hobby. It's mind-boggling to me. Yeah. We are so bad at promoting this hobby to the people that matter the most. And the people that matter the most are the ones that haven't discovered it yet. Mm -hmm. And we do everything we can to make sure those people don't feel welcome. Yeah. And it's shenanigans. It's shenanigans. Bring out, a, bring me out Rhino Hero Super Battle with four other people that say they hate board games. I'll make anyone. And I'll guarantee you they'll want to play it again. 100%. That was a bit of a rant, but I needed to get it out. Here's another one. Why I think board games are great for you. It teaches you how to lose Preach. and how to be okay with being a loser <laughs> because you can't like that's unless you're some sort of a wizard or you're a little bit of a cheaty pants. Yeah. You're not winning every game. There's so many people in this world that are very competitive. We are very competitive, but I think that we have come to a space in board games where we just don't care if we win or lose. Yeah. And I think that's such a great thing because mm -hmm. there's so many people that hate losing. And I feel like if you play board games enough, you're going to lose some, you're going to win some. And it's just like, I don't know about you, but I feel like it's taken me to a place where I'm just kind of like, yeah, that's fine. I now know how to lose. Darn, I'll get you next time. I yeah. think it teaches you how to lose. <laughs> I think you, that's a good thing. you've further progressed on that journey so far than I have. Because I always win. However, <laughs> I would caveat that quickly. Like, it is tough. Like, we were playing games with Illy and Tyler. Mm. I just, I like to use this as an example because I think it's a really good example. Yeah. And They're really good. They're games. very good at games. <laughs> 
And I think I won like two or three games over the course of like 50 or so games. It was brutal. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough on anyone. But Jeffy got through it. But I got through it. <laughs> and I do think there's like, you know, there's certain pockets where that dynamic can change. I'm very competitive, as Jamie has alluded to. And like, I'll play Root all the time with like Max, Duel, and Kyle, Max, Duel, and Sam, Max, whatever. I want to beat them to a pulp. I don't want to lose to them, but it's not malicious. I think that's the important piece. Like, I don't want to lose to them, but if I do, I don't then hate them. I think there's a lot of people in this hobby that get very mad when Table they lose. Table flip. Like, very, very angry. That just shows to me that there's more learning to do there. Mm -hmm. Because, again, like, this is like, this is life, man. Like, yeah. you're going to get knocked down a hundred times. And we've been knocked down a hundred times. And we get back up and we keep moving. Yeah, I've same, never won Fort. It's the same as board games. Like, it is a really good avenue to understand, especially for kids. Yeah. You know, especially for kids to understand that dynamic of like, okay, you lost. What can you do differently next time so that that doesn't happen? Okay, and if you it lost, doesn't, but you still had fun, right? And and <laughs> And improving. Yeah. You know, and, and understanding that everything's just not an instant win. Yeah. You know, I think in that's In the world important. of everybody gets a participation trophy. Yeah. Not in board games. That that instant gratification piece or like, you know, like never never losing thing. I think this avenue, this board game space is a good way to softly teach people the dynamics of losing. 100%. I yeah. totally agree with that. I do think that we've kind of uh, mentioned it, you know, about like mental you know health health and whatever but like board games has helped me specifically and i'm sure that there's other people that have also dealt with this i have a hard time sometimes and i still struggle with some board games and it's still a journey i'm on there are times when i'm playing a board game that i can kind of get lost in it depending on the game like that's that's almost They're sacred people. right now because i have a very hard time to shut my brain off to disconnect disconnect on certain things so if I can get deep into a game and strategy and really focusing on what I'm doing, it's almost like this relief. And I don't even notice it until I'm done playing. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't deal with that, you're probably not going to understand what I'm talking about. But I know that there are people out there that do understand what I'm talking a about. Lot. It's just getting into something where you're not thinking about all of the other voices in the head. And there's certain things in my life that can provide that. You know, painting is one reading a book is another getting lost in a game though is super cool when you're really in that moment of like this is such an awesome fun game and you're just there with the person you're with or the people around you and you're just in that moment mm -hmm. those those moments for me are super rare right now so i really just appreciate the board game hobby's ability to do that it's like therapy um, ex exactly yeah it's 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 therapy mm -hmm. yeah yeah so those are just some things, some reasons why we think board games are great for you. And we threw in a couple little rants just for your own entertainment. So you're welcome for that too. But I don't know. We like discussing, we like having discussions about things and talking about board games specifically and board gamey things. I don't know if you knew that about us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. I just love every now and then I think it's good to sit back and reflect on the hobby that we choose to spend the majority of our time and doing and money. The I think it's important. Of our time and money. <laughs> I do think it's important for everyone. I think everyone needs to sit down every once in a while and just gut check. Yeah. And be like, am I right. living? Am I living the values I have mm -hmm. set out for myself with the channel or whatever? Like whatever avenue of life, I think it's important to sit down and just be like. Check-in time. Check-in time. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we were doing today. So we would love to hear down below some reasons that maybe you love board games or reasons that you think board games are good for you or good for people in general. What have your experiences been like? If you'd like to continue the discussion even more, please feel free to join our Discord. Mm -hmm. um, because like we talked about first with that community piece, there's over 1,500 people in the Discord at this point. Yeah. And a it lot of is different voices and opinions. A lot of different voices and opinions, a lot of different topics, a lot lot of things and but no dingai yeah oh yeah no dinguses no, no meanies, meanies or weenies no in weenies. there yeah if you're a meanie or a weenie bye-bye sorry we've done it we'll do it again mm -hmm. boot you out yep
if you're meanie Bye. or weenie. Put it down below, join the Discord, all that good stuff. And if you too would like to suggest a topic for us to discuss or a video to do, feel free to join our Patreon. It's not required by you at all, but the information's down below if you'd like. But that's everything that we had for today. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're interested in buying board games, like any of the tens and thousands and hundreds of thousands that exist, yeah. you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Six dollars for three hours of play. It's crazy. It's wild. And the food there's really good. Mwah, delicious. Speaking of food, if you like snacks, check out Munch Pack. All the information for that's down below as well. That's everything. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later it is. Cha cha chabuchi. Roll call. My name is Jamie. I like to play board games. And why? Because they are fun. Yes, they are fun. Your huh? name is Jeff. You like to play games. Why? Because of dinosaurs. What? Cha cha chuchi cha 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 chuchi rock. <laughs> why can't you say cha cha chabuchi? Cha cha chabuchi. I don't know. I just can't do it. Hey, Jeff, are you ready or what? How could they tell? But How this, would they know? This one I feel like is going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do a great job. Okay. I was going to talk. Um, talk. Because when you play board games, it makes you happy. And when you play, play board games, it increases your endorphins. And endorphins make you happy. And happy people just don't want to kill their husbands. That's from Legally Blonde. And I was like, where did that come from? That's <laughs> terrifying. So we would obviously love to know in the comments below some of the things that you think board games are, but they make... Yep. <laughs> what the hell was I trying to say? <laughs>